Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is tree. T R E E. Really? You bet your life. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! That's me, Groucho Marx! here I am again with a mountain of Mazuma. $4,000 for one of our couples. Mr. Fenneman, uh, who's first to try for the $4,000? Well, Groucho, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected two ladies. Mrs. Uh, Martha Hendley, who works in a health food store, and Miss Nancy Williams, a young lady who climbs mountains as her hobby, and here they are. Ladies, meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, girls, for the DeSoto Plymouth dealers. Say the secret word and you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Nancy Williams, which one is your yeah. Nancy? Your Nancy, huh? You're a mountain climber. That's right. Where Where are you from? Chicago. Oh. And uh, Miss uh, Miss Hendley, huh? Yes. Are you Are you from Chicago? Too? Yes, I am. Oh, what a coincidence! I'll call you Nancy, huh? No, you're Martha. You're, I'll call you Martha, huh? All right. Why do you call me Nancy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about your health foods. Uh, where, where do you uh, work? Three Twenty Eight North La Brea, Alfred Health Foods. Alfred, uh, Alfred pretty healthy? Yes, he is. Well, what is health food exactly? It's food that hasn't been to nature, live foods. Live foods? Live foods. You mean you chase a cow and eat him while he's running? <laughs> <laughs> food that hasn't been to nature, unbleached. Yeah. Unrefined and unbleached. I used to have a dame like that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> she finally did bleach, but she never did get refined. <laughs> Uh, could you give me a good reason why I should eat uh, health foods? Yes. Well, don't stare at me that way. <laughs> why are they good? Full of they? vitamins and They're minerals. They're full of minerals? Minerals and vitamins. Mrs. Henley, I've been wondering exactly what is a vitamin? If you find it in your foods. What do these vitamins look like? You can't see them. Well, how do you know they're there? They're on the label. <laughs> Well, in that case, I'll just eat the label. <laughs> they don't taste very good, but they certainly stick with you. <laughs> well, how many how many uh, minerals are there in the body? <clears throat> Ninety in our bodies and forty in the food. I see. Well, there's really forty-one because last week I found a nail in my scrambled eggs. <laughs> what happened to the other uh, fifty minerals that are uh, missing? The Department of Agriculture hasn't discovered. Can you talk it. a little? The Department of Agriculture hasn't discovered the other forty. They haven't, huh? Well, how do, how do they know there's 90 if they've only discovered 40? <laughs> That's pretty ridiculous, isn't it? That's washing for you, though. <laughs> 50 minerals missing, and they don't even have an investigating committee. <laughs> Let's talk about mountain climbing, Nancy, huh? Why should anyone want to climb a mountain? I mean, what is the object? Get to the top. <laughs> Oh, is that the direction they go in? <laughs> After they get to the top, I mean, what's up there? Not very much, just the top. Well, that makes sense, I guess. <laughs> then what do they do? Climb back down. I apologize for saying that made sense. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they even look at what's on the other side when they get up there? Oh, yeah, sure. Sometimes they even go back down the other side. Why don't they just go around the mountain? They'd get to the same place, wouldn't they? They wouldn't be mountain climbers then if they just went around. No, but they'd be pretty shrewd cookies. <laughs> Are there many uh, enthusiasts in Southern California? Well, yes, there are many enthusiasts all over California, as a matter of fact. Uh -huh. I belong to the Sierra Club of California, which is uh, devoted to mountain climbing and conservation. Is that and all you're devoted to, just mountain climbing? Well, no. No. What else are you devoted to, uh, Nancy? Um, that's a leading question. <laughs> yes, it is, and I'd like a leading answer. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to know to be a mountain climber? Oh, you should know a good deal of technique, particularly. 
You need to know something about the kind of snow you can climb on, this kind of snow you can't climb on. Well, suppose and you're slipping off ice. What happens? You reach for the ice. You reach for the ice. Huh? Do you have bourbon with you or just the... Uh... <laughs> I'm straight. I suppose I'm climbing and my foot slips. What do I do? Pick a soft spot 3,000 feet below? Well, you're supposed to, the person who's climbing, you're supposed to yell out, fall first. <laughs> you holler fall before you're falling? You How fall. do you know if you're going to fall if you holler? Well, if you fall, you're falling. Then you call fall. Well, isn't that too late? Once no. you're falling, isn't that pretty late to that, holler? To... That warns your belayer that you're going to fall, and he can, he can catch that you. That warns who? The belayer. Oh, this is a new character. I haven't met him. <laughs> now, is this the fellow you're going with, Steady? He's the, he's the one that stopped, the, 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 that stopped you from falling. Well, uh, what happens specifically when uh, somebody falls down a mountain? What happens? Well, the person who's belaying, the climber, is in such a spot that uh, the jerk won't pull him off. <laughs> Why do you go out with a jerk in the first place? <laughs> well, it's been very interesting talking to you two. Of course, I still didn't know whether to get my <coughs> health out of a bottle or hanging at the end of a rope. <laughs> Neither one sounds very healthy. However, let's see how you make out in the battle for the $4,000. Now, in just one minute, you're going to play your bet your life. But first, I want you to pay close attention to this. It's great! It's new! It's designed for you! DeSoto! DeSoto is the car that is new, completely new. DeSoto Plymouth dealers want to show this car to you. So see the new DeSoto, drive the new DeSoto. No other car rides like a DeSoto! When folks get together and start talking about new cars, you'll find the car that's creating the most interest is the new 1951 DeSoto. Because no other car rides like a DeSoto. One ride in this great new car, and you'll be amazed by the feel of that new, higher-powered engine that's raring to get up and go. You'll get the smoothest ride of your life, thanks in great part to those new Auraflow shock absorbers. You'll appreciate the extra safety you get from DeSoto's safety rim wheels that protect your family in case of blowout. Also, those big new 12-inch brakes. No other car in America has larger brakes. Yes, these are the features that are really getting talked about. Features that make this new DeSoto a revelation to ride and to drive. So if you're planning on buying a new car, you owe it to yourself to visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer and see the new 1951 DeSoto. What do you say to that, Groucho? No other car rides like a DeSoto. Now, let's see if you'll get the chance at the $4,000. Mr. Fenneman. Yes, sir. Would you mind explaining the rules? Uh, you bet as much of your $20 as you want on each of four questions. And the, dignity, couple, <laughs> the couple that earns the most money. Gets a chance at the $4,000 DeSoto Plymouth question at the end of the show. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected historical American sites. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to try? $10. Ten. Ten. $10. Where did Lincoln make his most famous address? Gettysburg. Gettysburg is right on the nail. <laughs> and you're off to a good start. You have $30. Remember, you're going for $4,000 tonight. Now, how much of your $30 are you going to bet this time? $20. 20. Where was gold discovered in California in 1848? Not at Sutter's Mill, but... Sutter's Mill is right. You said it. <laughs> we had to squeeze that out of her that time. You now have $50. You were halfway up the mountain that time, man. <laughs> you have $60. You should $50. How much of the 50 are you going to try? Um, 40. 40. The Declaration of Independence was adopted by the Continental Congress in what city? Philadelphia. Philadelphia, Philadelphia. is correct. <laughs> You now have $90. All right, you have $90. Here's your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the 90? Shoot the, 90. Shoot the works. And what river did Robert Fulton launch his first steamboat? Uh, Come on, kid. The Hudson River. The Hudson River is right. <laughs> and you wind up with a grand total of $180. Thank you very much. we we'll see you later, girls. What have you to say, Mr. Uh, Groucho, the secret word is still tree. We look through our studio audience tonight for um, housewives and um, house renovators. And just before we went on the air, 
Our studio audience selected Mr. Harold Wood. He's the house renovator. And his partner is a housewife, Mrs. Lily Anderson. And here they are. Folks, come in here and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Lily Anderson. Uh, what kind of a name is that, uh, Lily? It's a Swedish name. Swedish, huh? What part of Italy are you from? County Cork, Ireland. You're from County Cork, Ireland, huh? Yeah. Why did you leave Ireland? Well, I couldn't take it, could I? <laughs> no, you, you couldn't take it, but you could have pulled out the court and drank it. <laughs> Mr. Harold Wood, huh? Where, where'd you come from? London, England. Oh. Why did you leave London? Because I liked it better here. You crossed me, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Anderson, uh, you're married, I uh, presume. Uh, how'd, how'd you meet your husband? Well, I was coming home from work in an automobile factory. And I noticed he was tagging on behind me. So, what do you mean? He was in hiding on the back of the no, car? No, I wasn't in a car. I was at walking. I was on Shanksmere. So, you're on where? On Shanksmere. You're welcome. <laughs> what is Shanks Mayor? That's your feet. Oh, oh we use back in Ireland. It's my feet, huh? My feet. Well, my feet were never in Ireland, so I don't know. <laughs> well, anyway, he was tagging on behind me, making more American, and I left him. Tag you on. weren't even married to him, and you left him all I left him tag on. Oh, you left him tag on. Oh, huh? well, I got, was... I got in home, and he went... He kept outside the house, giving a little tap at the fence, and my mother said, get out and give that fella the brush off. So I went out and said I made a date. <laughs> Where was this? In Cork. Why did you leave Ireland? <laughs> <laughs> I better answer it. I left Ireland because my husband came to California and, and you sent to be, for you me, and be... I had to be with him. Well, I don't blame him for sending for and Mr. Wood, you're a house renovator? What, what kind of... Now, stop bowing. You're not Shanks Mayor, you know. <laughs> Just what is a house renovator, Mr. Wood? Well, we clean private homes. I see. I used to have a friend who cleaned private homes. He's now in jail. <laughs> Don't look at me that way, Mr. Wood. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I'd throw myself at your shanks mayor. <laughs> now, just what do you mean you clean private homes? Well, we clean uh, ceilings, walls, woodwork, and things like that. How much do you get for a job like that? Well, uh, according to the size of the home, maybe around four or five hundred dollars. I don't know whether you clean the home, but you say you clean the customer. <laughs> What are some of the hazards of your job, Harold? Well, um, uh, cleaning ceilings is a pretty, pretty hard job on planks. <coughs> what else? Did you ever have any accidents while you were cleaning? Well, I got my head uh, stuck between a stove and an ice box. <laughs> to get it out. Your your head was stuck between a stove and an ice box. That's right. You must have blown hot and cold as. <laughs> How about you, Mrs. Anderson? Anything embarrassing ever happened to you? Anything? Yeah. What? Even last Monday night. What happened well, last I Monday? I think it was very embarrassing anyway. I went down to Newbury to buy something, and, um, well, I went down to the basement. I don't know if you know where the basement is. Yes, it's down below, yeah. isn't it? Well, <laughs> well, I made a purchase there, and after well, I a while, so. I made my way to come up came over to the escalator and I kept on going up but I was still not getting up and I thought what the heck is wrong steady there Mrs. And I, <laughs> I looked around and I 
around. Daddy, there are sailors out front here tonight. <laughs> we can't afford any loose talk here, Mrs. Anderson. <laughs> here you are, halfway up the basement. Now, what happened? Yeah, well, I was coming down again, you see, so they, there was a man next door. Next now, when you went back again, did basement. you have to make another purchase? I did not. I just looked at this man. He looked at me in a maze. He says, Madam, if you want to get up, go to the other side. That's an escalator coming down, Your on. <laughs> I think I was embarrassed enough. Well, you're accustomed to Shanks, Mayor, and it's hard to get used to an escalator. <laughs> well, I, I have worse. <laughs> That's one. I had many. <laughs> uh, do you ever have any complaints against your customers, Mr. Wood? No. Uh... <laughs> This is one of the densest woods I've ever been in. <laughs> Come on out with it, Harold. Well, I tell you. <laughs> and about time, too. I was cleaning the place. Well, we cleaned uh, the wrong room. And the woman wanted me to put the dirt back on the wall to make it even with the other rooms. Now, when it comes to cleaning walls and scrubbing the floors and other hard work, do you use any special equipment, Mrs. Anderson? Nothing, only my husband. <laughs> That's a typical wife for you. She'd rather mop the floor the old-fashioned way with her husband. <laughs> Well, thanks to you two, I know all about spring cleaning. Now, let's see if you can beat the other couples and get the chance at the $4,000. Now, you run your out $20 and no more than the others. I can't tell you how much our first couple won, but George Fenneman, or Mr. Squire Fenneman, is off stage to remind our listeners. Our two ladies, the health food clerk and the mountain climber, won $180. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. You selected male, male of the species. Now, here's your first question. How much of the 20 are you going to risk? Uh, try ten. All right, ten. try ten. All right. <laughs> Here we go. For ten dollars, what do you call a male cow? A bull? A bull is right. <laughs> and one more, you have thirty dollars. <laughs> she looked at Harold and got the answer immediately. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, remember you're going for four thousand dollars. How much of the uh, thirty dollars are you going to bet this time? Get half. Half. half All right, what do you call a male pig? A sow. Oh, no, no. One answer between you. No. No. A male pig? You can answer. Female. Oh, I'm sorry, it, uh, it's a boar. It's a boar. You should have looked at me and got that. Huh? <laughs> you know, I have $15. You got $15. Here's your third question. How much will you bet? Beautiful. How much is it? Fifteen. Fifteen dollars. Uh, uh, Harold, hurry up before five. inflation gets us, huh? <laughs> the money will be worthless by the time you get it done. <laughs> How much are you going to bet? Fifteen? Five. Five dollars. What do you call a male sheep? A ram. A ram is right. Now you're back to twenty dollars. This is your last chance to be the other couple. How much are you going to bet? Ten. Ten. Yeah. All right. What do you call a male goat? Uh, uh, Billy we call him. That's right. A Billy goat is right. <laughs> and you wind up with thirty dollars. Wind up with thirty dollars. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Thank Harold. I'll see you as soon as you wake up. Huh? <laughs> uh, Gracho. Yes, Mr. Fenneman. The, uh, the secret word is still tree. Who's we, next? I was going to say we look through the studio audience uh, for couples, married couples, who have unusual occupations. And just before we went on the air, Mr. and Mrs. E.R. Cross were chosen. Folks, come in here and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, for the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And you say the secret word and you'll win $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mr. and Mrs. E.R. Cross. Eh? Mr. Cross, uh, what does the E.R. stand for besides uh? Those are my initials. Those are your initials? Or what, is it, uh, what does the ER stand for? Ellis Royal, but I never use it. <laughs> well, you have my sympathy, Mr. Cross. Uh, what does your wife call you, uh, Ellis? She calls me Cross. Uh, why do you call him Cross? Well, that's his name. Excellent reason. <laughs> what does your husband call you, Mrs. Cross? 
He calls me Jerry. Uh -huh. Now, you two were selected because of your unusual occupations. Ellis, what do you do? I'm a deep sea diver. Oh. Well, most of us have a hard time keeping our heads above water these days. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what is your unusual occupation, Jerry? Well, I help him. You help your husband? Mm -hmm. Well, that's unusual for a wife these days. <laughs> you mean you're a deep sea diver, too? Yes, I am. You're awfully dry for a uh, deep sea diver. I feel very dry, too. <laughs> you know what Shank's mare is? Sure, your feet. Your legs. Everybody knows that but me. <laughs> How did you meet your husband? Were you taking a stroll at the bottom of the ocean? Jerry? Um, no, I met him in a nightclub in Panama. Well, that's appropriate. You met him in a dive. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have you gone down in the water? Uh, uh, 300 Cross, times. Huh? I've been down... 300 times? Mm -hmm. You must have a strong constitution. <laughs> Most people get down three times in this curtain. <laughs> How does it feel to go deep under the water? Well, I always get very lightheaded and very giddy and also very happy. What you actually mean is the lower you get, the higher you get. Is that right? <laughs> Aren't you afraid when you're walking around underwater? What, what worries you most down there? What worries me most underwater? When, you, when you're down deep. Mm, well, I guess the thing that worries me the most is getting my air hose twisted. There's a woman for you. Fifty feet underwater, and she's worrying about her hose being twisted. <laughs> vanity, vanity, all is vanity. <laughs> now, Mr. Cross, what are some of the hazards of deep-sea diving? How about sharks? Don't they bother you? Well, sharks and other fish, too, will bother you if they're agitated or cornered. Uh -huh. I think, uh, from my own experience, the seal has been about as troublesome as any of them. Mm -hmm. Are they ferocious, the seals? No, they're just well, what, playful. What uh, kind of fish are? What kind of fish you are ferocious? you ever encounter a whale down there, or don't they go that uh, deep? Normally, the whale is hazardous from the standpoint of upsetting your boat. He likes to scratch his back on the bottom of your diving boat. Mm -hmm. Well, who wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's, the, what's the deepest you've been down, Mr. Cross? 320 feet. And what is it like that far down? Oh, the visibility is very poor, sort of a bluish light. And, and how far can you see? Oh, all you can see is six feet. Six feet? Who do they belong to, the Andrews sisters? <laughs> <laughs> well, what is the deepest you've, you've submerged, uh, Jerry? Uh, 152 feet. Only 152 feet? Is that the best you could teach your wife, Mr. Cross? Well, that was the world's record for the women. That... Oh, well, I didn't know that. It's... <laughs> I want to tell you that it's an honor to meet the one woman who sunk lower than all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I want to congratulate you, Mrs. Cross. And you too, Mr. Cross. Thank you. Well, you're an interesting couple, and I'm sorry I didn't learn more about diving. Deep sea diving. <laughs> But the whole thing's too deep for me anyway. <laughs> now, in just a minute, you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at $4,000. I can't tell you how much our other couples won, but Fenneman is, uh, Mr. Fenneman is going to remind our listeners. The health food clerk and the mountain climber are still leading with $180. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. Here's your first question. Now, how much of the $20 are you going to try? Ten, I think. You selected islands of the world. Is that right? Here's your first question. You're going to bet $10. What country owns Sicily? Italy. Italy is right. <laughs> you're off to a good start. You have $30. Remember, you're going for $4,000 tonight. Now, how much of your $30 are you going to bet? $20. $20. $20. What country owns the island of Bali? The island of Bali? Holland. Well, that, I think that's right. It's Netherlands, Netherlands but I think yeah. Holland is... Uh, I think that's a good answer. <laughs> now you have fifty dollars. Here's your third question. Now, uh, how much are you going to bet this time? You have fifty dollars. Forty. Forty dollars. What country owns the island of Corsica? I think it's Greece. Oh. Talk it over. All right. Is that it? Well, I guess. You say Spain. What are you going to say now? One <laughs> answer. What are you going to say? Corsica. Come on. I'll say it's Greece. 
No, I'm sorry. sorry. No, it's France. France, oh. They now have $10. This is your last chance to be the other couples. How much of the time are you going to go for? Oh, I have to go all. All that. right, what country owns the island of Honshu? H-O-N-S-H-U. Yeah. Japan is right. <laughs> Well, you wind up with $20, and that means the health food lady and the mountain climber with $180 get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $4,000 question. It's great! It's new! No other car rides like a DeSoto! Friends, the brand new 1951 DeSoto meets every demand you can ask of it. Take comfort. DeSoto's new Auraflow shock absorbers cushion every inch of your ride. No other car rides like a DeSoto. As for safety, DeSoto has big 12-inch brakes that stop you quicker, safer. In fact, no other car in the United States has larger brakes. And when it comes to beauty, well, the new DeSoto is in a class by itself. The best-looking car on the highway. A car that you'll really be proud to own. Add to all these DeSoto's chair-high seats, completely waterproof ignition, increased visibility, and a host of other features, and you'll begin to realize just how much extra value DeSoto really gives you. Yet it costs very little more than the lowest price cars. Yes, folks, we think the new DeSoto has everything you would put in a car if you were designing it. So see the new DeSoto. Drive the new DeSoto. As Groucho says... No other car rides like a DeSoto. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell the great new Plymouth. All right, George, now bring out our winning couple. All right, Groucho, here they come. Uh, the health food lady and the mountain climber, all set for their try at the $4,000 DeSoto Plymouth question. Here we go for $4,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so think carefully, and no help from the audience. Here it is. Five of our presidents had the same first name. For $4,000, tell me, what name was it? What is the answer you two have decided upon? George. No, I'm sorry. It's James. It was Madison, Monroe. Madison, Monroe, Polk, Buchanan, and Garfield were all named James. I'm sorry. Better luck next time. And thanks for coming over. How much did they win? Uh, they won $180 well, in the quiz, not, that's, that's not so bad. So that means the big question next week will be worth $4,500. Well, you lost the big money, but you won $180 in the quiz. Congratulations and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Be sure to tune in again next Wednesday night at this time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $4,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember... Just be sure to visit your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Folks, every time you look at a front page or listen to a news program, you're reminded of events that make the American Red Cross more vital than ever. Answer your 1951 Red Cross appeal. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast.